Hey guys, Zarak here, and today I'm bringing you another video, but instead of just me, I have a special guest. Hey guys, Jutal the Nerd here, coming at you, gonna help old Zarak here with the top 10 things that changed the Pokemon franchise. Let's get right into this. Number 10, we have mini games. Uh, this consists of contests, uh, the Pokemon Dream World, Pokemon Lotto, mining, uh, the Pokemon Corners, you know, like the gaming corners. I feel these added a lot to the games themselves, um, not just to distract us from our Pokemon training, but, you know, some, sometimes the grind is just too much and you just want to go off and do something else, like riding for 14 hours or spin the slot machines for, I don't know, three days or something. Just just random crap like that. It just gives you a nice little thing to do. And the contests in and of themselves, I really liked because it was an entire new way to kind of battle your Pokemon. And it made you have Pokemon that you wouldn't generally have or care about, like Skitty and stuff like that. Because they were terrible in battle, but when it came to contests, they are freaking amazing. And yes, I chose this image because you can see Jasmine's camel toe. Cools. At the number 9 spot here, we have breeding. Because, believe it or not, back in Generation 1, you couldn't breed. That's right, Miss, Miss Skitty here, or Mr. Skitty here, couldn't have sex with this poor Waylord. Ah, oh, poor Waylord. There's not a whole lot to say about it, so let's just sing a little song here. Does Serena not know that Skitty and Waylord are fucking in her van every Sunday, making this abomination? Well, isn't that just classy? And number eight, Mega Evolution. Well, I say evolution, it's not actually evolution. It did change a lot of the game mechanics uh, as to where, like, you couldn't hold leftovers or berries or any of that crap if you wanted to Omega Evolve. You have to hold, hold the I don't know if it's a Lucaria, the Lucarianite or whatever. But it does add a little bit to the game. But in my personal opinion, they took Pokemon that needed evolutions and just kind of modified them a little bit and gave them these Mega Evolutions which were kind of shitty. Like, take for example this Kangaskhan here. Well, the baby Kangaskhan just hopped out of the damn pouch and they called it a brand new evolution. That's bullshit, Nintendo. F you. At the number seven spot here, we have Natures. Well, look at this. This is Pikachu. Pikachu is awesome. But in the first and second generations of Pokemon, every Pikachu was this Pikachu. Which doesn't leave very much room for, you know, fun, imagination, and other than that. There, with the introduction in third generation of natures, uh, we were able to now breed Pokemon for different natures, that kind of stuff. But it also left some interesting personalities of Pokemon. Now, look at this. We, because of personalities, and it's been in the working since the very beginning... The personalities of Pokemon, not all Pikachus are the same. And since not all Pikachus are the same, we can have stuff like this. We can have Surfing Pikachu, Flying Pikachu, Pikachu Lombre, Ninja Pikachu, Evil Pikachu, Super Saiyan Pikachu, and Thug Life Pikachu. Oh yeah. Anyway. So Nature's gave us all kinds of stuff that we could play around with. And here's a chart of kind of how the things works. If you have a positive nature on a Pokemon, they get a 10% boost in that particular stat. With the downside that they get a negative 10% in another. Which still keeps the balance, but makes each Pokemon different. Which is awesome. And number six, we have types. Introducing new types to the Pokemon world. Uh, in second generation, we added dark type and steel type. 
Uh, notable Pokemon in these typings were Umbreon and Steelix. Umbreon was the dark type, and Umbreon was created to combat the overpowered Psychic type, and Steelix was made because everyone and their mother was using Toxic. So Weezing here would just like wreck entire teams. And 18 years after the original games, Pokemon X and Y came out and they introduced the Fairy type. Uh, most notably Sylveon here. Uh, because they finally figured out that Dragonite is just way too damn powerful. And that Steelix and other Steel types just were kind of crap. And they needed something to be good. So that's why Fairy types were introduced. All of these ty types... Um, created huge hypes in the Pokemon world, and I feel that just having these types felt special because it wasn't a common type, and just having one of these new types just felt special. There's not much else to say about type typings here, but let's move on to number five. Just kidding. Here's Zorok to finish out our list. Take it away, buddy. Uh, thanks, Jutar. Anyway, we're just going to go right into number five here, and this one is one that I hold very dearly to my heart, any of you guys that have been to my channel previously, and that is what they did as a side game of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. The fact that you can actually be a Pokemon in a Pokemon world with no humans in there, so you're basically all anthropomorphic. I think it was a really interesting and innovative feature that they did, and they even got Chunsoft, who specializes in those type, those type of games, to do it. I think that they really did well in it. They've made, what, four different series games of it. They've had Red and Blue, Darkness, Time and Sky, Gates to Infinity, and then Super Mystery Dungeon. So, it's a really good franchise, and if you guys haven't played it, I very highly recommend it. Like I said, it's, very, it's something that I hold very special to my heart. Because I just think it's a really good game, really good concept, and something that changed the series. Because before then, you never had something like that. And everyone probably, I can't remember, because at that time I was like six years old. I don't even think I actually got into Pokemon when Pokemon Red and Blue came out. But people were probably wanting to be Pokemon back at that time. Moving into number four is something that I can actually say a lot about because I was part of the Pokemon community at the time and that is graphics changes now I'm not on about you know little graphics changes like coloration like putting color in it from red and blue gold and silver etc etc I'm on about actual 2d to 3d animation and character design changes so most notably from black and white 2 to X and Y now when I got X and Y and I turned it on for the first time I won't lie I got Hyped. I don't think I actually left my room in my house for like 20 minutes. I was just walking around in a circle because my character was basically 3D with obviously the 3D feature being on. But it wasn't like 2D, wasn't small, wasn't anything like that. And it's actually quite hard to go back into stuff like black and white, heart, gold, soul, silver and seeing stuff like that. And then obviously they're changing it again in Sun and Moon. They're actually putting proportions in so youngsters won't be the same size as you. And also, Pokemon will be less, etc, etc. So, really nice concept there. It's not something too drastic, but it really made the game very much nicer to play. And also very much more enjoyable, realistic, etc, etc. Moving into number three here is a pretty big subtopic. And that is Pokemon Interaction. Now, with this, we're going for the Pokemon Ami. Uh, riding Pokemon, Pokemon walking behind you, playing with your Pokemon, um, not in that way, and just stuff like that. I think it's something that was, it was a nice thing to implement, and I think it's really good, uh, a really good feature, and I like it, and I think it should be back in every single game. Obviously, a lot of people were wanting Pokemon to be walking behind you again in Sun and Moon, as far as I'm aware, that is not happening. But they've been really implementing the riding of the Pokemon. So I can't think of what the first game was. I think X and Y was the first game that really rode the Pokemon. And you had Lapras that you could ride on. And I think they also had Rhydon that you could. And Mamoswine, 
I might be wrong in that. And then they implemented Sharpedo in Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And then what we've seen from Sun and Moon, you can even go on a Charizard, a Tauros. You've got obviously Gogo as well. I forgot about Gogo. I believe Bufalon, I think you can ride as well. So there's always different Pokemon that you can ride. And you can be like connection, like you're actually in the game. Like you're riding, Ash riding that Ponita in that race that should have burnt him, but whatever. Moving into number two here is something very, very recent, and that is Pokemon Go. Now, love it or hate it, whether you want to throw your phone at Niantic because of what they did with the tracking, as you guys saw from the parody that I did a couple of weeks ago, Pokemon Go is something here to say, and it's something revolutionizing. Now, before Pokemon Go started, I was starting to get into the gym and stuff, and trying to get myself healthy, etc, etc. And I would literally walk to the gym because I didn't want to get, get my mum to give me loads of money, and then I would get the bus back. The bus is around a pound um, to get back. So it'd be two pounds each um, if I wanted to go both ways, or just one pound to get back. And that's what I was set in stone to doing. But then Pokemon Go came out. Since Pokemon Go came out, I've walked there, I've walked back, I've gone round the town. There's two hotspots that are one um, each side of the town, and I actually go to both those hotspots to actually play Pokemon Go for a while. And I must walk 5, 6 miles, or about 11, 12 kilometers per day on a day that I go to the gym, and even when I don't go to the gym, I've got a park right next to me that's got five or six Pokestops, three gyms. I just walk around there, spend about an hour going out into the open that I wouldn't normally do. Normally I would just come home from the gym, sit down, play some games, play some RuneScape, play some Call of Duty, for example, and I wouldn't do anything else. But Pokemon Go really has revolutionized going outside, actually getting people to go outside, and then don't even get me started about the actual point of the game. The actual um, Orme reality or augmented reality, whichever way around it is, that you can actually see the Pokemon if you've got the gyroscope uh, sensor. And it also socializes a lot of people. Obviously, you've got the three teams, and there's a little bit of competition there. And some people take it a little bit too seriously. But otherwise, it's really good just to socialize with. I don't know how many people I've actually caught a Pokemon with, or I've told them where to go. You know, where a Pokestop is, how to use a Pokestop, etc, etc. And it's honestly really fun because I would never have spoken to those people prior. It's something very sociable and I think it was something that was really good. And it would bring in Nintendo into the mobile market so we can expect something differently. They've gone from the DS, the Wii U, etc, etc. And they're now actually going to the phone. And I think that is going to be really cool. I cannot wait to see what else they have. Then moving on to the number one thing. Now this one is very, very recent. In fact, it's so recent that we don't even know how it's going to work. And that is the sun and moon feature of having no gyms. Now, whether you want to believe the Chinese leaks or whether you don't, whether you think it's going to be different, whether you don't, we can all say that gyms will pretty much not be in the game. There won't be Pokemon gyms. Now, if you go all the way back to when the first Pokemon game came out in Japan in 1996, 20 years ago, there was Pokemon gyms. There was eight gyms, and then there was the Elite Four. That was it. That was the algorithm. And that's the algorithm for every single Pokemon main game series game since. For the whole 20 years, Gold, Silver, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Pearl, Diamond, Platinum, Black, White, Black 2, White 2, X, Y, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire. I think I got them all. They are all following in that algorithm. Sun and Moon isn't. Sun and Moon has a four trial island system with four kahunas. Uh, okay, yeah, you can say it's gyms as well, but it's technically not. It's not going to, we don't actually know what this is going to be like. And it's something completely different. Because we've never had a game with no gyms. And if you believe the Chinese leaks, which I think you should, because from what they've announced so far, it seems like those Chinese leaks are 100% real. We're not even going to have a proper Elite Four. We actually have to make the Elite Four. Like your character in the game actually has to make the Elite Four. Not you have to beat them, no, you make them. 
That is just something crazy. And it's just changed the game completely, changed the meta completely. The algorithm has been scrapped. It is ridiculous. And when I saw that in the trailer, I just went crazy because it's like, it's so random. No one expected something that's worked for 20 years, right, since it started in existence. And they've just scrapped it. They've just changed it completely. It's unreal. So, anyway, guys. That is our top 10 list of what we thought changed the Pokemon series. Be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to both our channels. Peace. And remember to stay classy, people.